Good morning, Bethel family. Welcome to worship this morning. Wherever you are, we welcome you. But before we start, let's, um, I have some announcement for you this morning. The semi-annual congregational meeting, it's tonight at 7 p.m. via Zoom. At this meeting, we will be presenting our slate of officers for 2021 for our church council, as well as a bid for painting the church. So you are all welcome. You already received your letter uh, and email with the Zoom link for you to participate. So we're waiting for you tonight at 7 p.m. So if you can be there a little bit early, uh, 10 minutes before, it would be great. Also, November 8th at 3 p.m. It will be my installation, so you will be invited um, by email and also a mail uh, you will, in which you will receive the, the Zoom link as well. So it is not going to be in person. It will be online. So let's take a deep breath together to allow the spirit that connects us with one another to be the spirit within us that allows us to see one another as human beings. We got less our flaws, imperfections, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The life when it's taken away from one affects all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and son, making us heirs of your promise and servant of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. And we knew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page five in your bulletin, Before You, Lord, We Bow.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts, created by you. Let us live in your image, created for you. Let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our choir anthem is for he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, Christ alone will give him all the glory, will give him all The first lesson is from Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 to 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight and I know you by your name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you, you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm for today is Psalm 96. The cantor will sing the verses in plain type, and the congregation will sing the bold-faced verses.
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations. And God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and great is to be praised. More to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is King. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder, and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all of the wood shall for joy at your coming, O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. The second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, and the Lord, Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We will always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, 
just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you, in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Here ends the second reading. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with youth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. The sermon hymn is on page 9 in your bulletin. Shout to the Lord.
Grace and peace to you, siblings in Christ. How is God calling each of us to grow closer to God, deeper in faith, and more active in the mission and ministry of Bethel? If we really want to stay centered on Christ and offer Christ by doing everything through Christ, we will want to pay close attention to what Christ himself has to say in the scripture this morning. I invite you to listen. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. Here we are back in the temple court of Jerusalem, only a few days before Jesus will be betrayed. Jesus is still teaching about what it's mean to belong to the kingdom of God, a kingdom that has already broken into our world and is growing toward its fullness. It is Tuesday of Holy Week, and Jesus has already entered into Jerusalem triumphantly cursed a fig tree, challenged the authority and the chief priests and elders, and told parables to anger, the, to anger the Pharisees. And then it isn't even, even noon. Again, Jesus and his followers are confronting two different groups, the Pharisees' disciples and the Herodians. It is the only time disciples of the Pharisees are mentioned in the entire New Testament. No one would have expected the alliance between these two groups on the issue of taxation. The former's beliefs had much in common with those of the Zealots, a Jewish sect that opposed Rome and everything it stood for. The latter, were partisans of the dynasty of King Herod, who held their power by Rome's favor and hoped for the full restoration of Herodian authority. But their shared dislike for Jesus brought the two ideologically and politically opposed groups together. Together they offered a false praise of Jesus, hoping he would let his guard down before posing a question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? This question aims at entrapment. They describe his impartiality to all and his disregard for rank, encouraging him to denounce Roman authority. At the same time, they refer to his sincerity and truthfulness encouraging him to claim a level of righteousness that belongs only to God. 
But now, religious leaders in the Gospel of Matthew have a long history of testing Jesus in the hope of getting him to say something incriminating. This instance is no exception. In response, he asks for a coin they typically use to pay taxes, and they bring it to him. His implied message is, you are the ones who carry traffic in such coins that bear Caesar's image, not me. To carry and use them is to acknowledge Caesar's sovereignty. So now let's pause and take a look at the coin Jesus examined in this story. It is an important object lesson. The coin in question is a silver Roman denarius depicting the emperor's image, his head, and bearing the inscription, Tiberius Caesar, son of the defined Augustus, who also is Augustus. The coin's reverse declares Tiberius is high priest. Does that sound familiar to you? The emperor's image and inscription on the coin were reminders that the Roman Empire was present in every realm of their lives. The image and the inscription also identify who controlled the economy. The fact that they produced the coin so quickly also exposes the extent to which everyone, including or especially the Pharisees and the Eodians, have been participating in Caesar's economy willingly or because they have no other choice. They are all trading in Caesar's economy, so they are legally obligated to pay ta the tax. And Jesus is not about to encourage those at the margins to defy the empire and jeopardize their lives. The problem this religious and political leader said before Jesus is one we face every day in our life. To whom do we give our primary allegiance? When the law of the land seems to go against the law of God, what choice will we make? So here are some reminders. You belong to God, for you were made in God's image. God created you to bear God's own divine likeness. Your purpose, your calling, is to bear that image into the world as a constant reminder that God's kingdom has a higher claim on each of us than this broken world of ours has. So Bethel. I'm going to say the question against to you. How is God calling each of us to grow closer to God, deeper in faith, and more active in the mission and ministry of Bethel, the ministry of the church, and also the ministry in our neighborhood? How can we show Christ? How can to, you receive Christ? How can we proclaim Christ to one another and also to the people around us in this neighborhood? So when I was writing the sermon the other day, there was a song about Caesar's coin from a band in Haiti I grew up with that stuck in my head. So I had to find it on YouTube and listen to it. So it goes like, like this. Caesar, history tell me you are a generous man. Where you step, poverty no longer exists. When you spread in my pocket, it gives me security and empowerment. I have joy in my heart, and I'm always welcome at the house. So I know sometimes 
as church, when we think about ministry, we always think about the money. It's sometimes our relationship with the other people that we are ministering is always about the money. But to let you know today, this scripture this morning, it's not about money. But the singer in this, in this song is talking about the power and security and well-being the queen gives to the one who owns it. So that's mean the one who, have mo who has money has the power over the others, the other people they are ministering to. But again, this is not about money. It is about recognizing the image of God when we see it in one another, whether we are Christian or not, and calling attention to that image as a reminder that God is very present, even when we feel the most oppressed and threatened by the world around us. When Jesus says, give to God the things that are God's, he's reminding us that all we are and all we have belongs to the one who created us. Who created us? Guess what? It's God, the one who loves us more than we can ever imagine. The one who created us when he did, when, when God did create us, it says, God says it is good. So we are all good in the eyes of God. Second, in the water of our baptism, God claim us as beloved of God, making us God's heirs and servants of all. At the beginning of the service, we all said it together. It's a reminder of who we are, of, of whose we are. Because our identity as beloved children of God, bearing God's old image, shapes our behavior and our thinking. It urges us to become the people who Christ calls us to be centered in, on Christ, offering Christ, doing all things through Christ to the glory of God Almighty. So my sibling in Christ, whose are you? Caesar's or God's? Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 10 in your bulletin, Your Servants of God. Oh,
sisters, go in peace, be safe, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.